Right, we should be live now. So welcome to day three of the Simple Scrapper 10th anniversary party event. Um, I will be doing a presentation about December dailies without a kit. And I don't know if the previous session has already been up for viewing uh, because there will be quite a lot of repeats, but there will be also a few things uh, which I didn't get around to in the morning, my morning. Um, so welcome. I don't know if we are, if we have any non-members but a special welcome to you, if we have any. Um, and there are all sorts of reasons why you don't want to use or can't use a kit. Uh, my own reason was I discovered December Daily just by accident. And this was not a couple of years ago and I wasn't about to buy a whole range of new things and I had nothing in the six by eight so I went with what I had and went with 12 by 12 size and made do with what I could scrounge and get so when you order kits, you typically get paper, you get journaling cards, you get your numbers, and you get all sorts of embellishments. And of course, you also may get your album. Um, so that's sort of five things that you need to create for yourself if you are not getting an instant kit and paper how do you go about paper well there are all sorts of easy options i mean there are various sorts of scrapbooking papers and scrapbooking pads uh, that are christmas themed and you can just grab any of those you can also use paper from that aren't actually meant for scrapbooking like this pad which i actually discovered is brilliant because it's actually got no you can't really see it's transparent paper that i've got in this pad but you can always just use that that's the simple option of course why make it simple when with just a decent amount of effort you can make it very complicated um, i know this sort of goes a bit against the grain of the simple scrapper philosophy but yeah um, one easy way is using stencils there are loads of stencils which are decidedly Christmassy or maybe just purely wintry. Uh, of course, wintry only works if you are in a place where winter and Christmas happen to coincide. So you can go the multimedia way and use stencils and paints, inks. Uh, mists uh, and uh, you could also use modeling paste and this technique with the stencils can also be used on your album so for instance this there is done with modeling paste and I used a candy cane striped stencil to put some candy cane stripes on my on the back of my album you 
You can use various embossing folders. This perhaps is not quite so feasible for making large pieces of paper. Maybe this is more for making journaling cards and filler cards. But you could also use vellum. And where did I stick that card? Well, okay. Can't find the Christmas card. But then you have the opportunity of making the effect of transparency and then something behind. So that was embossing. I need to cross off my things because otherwise I'll just forget. For your paper, you can also use, now this is something that is also for embellishments. And this is one of the things that I have enjoyed the most. Ye good old fashioned coloring book which comes in all sorts of sizes, in small sizes, large sizes, and medium sizes. I never and, thought to use a coloring book. That's genius. <gasps> um, you can, I mean, you can then choose, do I want to do themed on, for instance, I want my, all my album to be about Christmas decorations and just find all the bauble pictures or do you want to go with a specific color scheme where you can just use your illustrations and just use the same colors when coloring and then use all sorts of pictures and I have done I have used this I hope the glare isn't bad uh, on my covers I have gone the coloring page way. Uh, and this one I also cut slightly into shape just because I felt like it. And you don't necessarily have to use the whole motif as it is. Uh, you could just cut a part of it and use that. But coloring books, uh, you can always, of course, be a real cheapskate and take a photocopy and then paste this in. And then next year you can take a copy of the same picture and color it in different ways if that's what you want. But coloring books and I mean they come in all sorts of types uh, all sorts of sizes and I don't know I think I've seen some join the dot books which I imagine you would also be able to use those just do your lines maybe add some color but um, this And then something which I have only started experimenting with today because I haven't had all that much time. And I have just realized I forgot to take a, a copy of the original. So hang on a moment. A couple of years ago, I took a picture of some of my Christmas baubles and today I did some experimenting, finally, because I printed it out in not quite 6x8 but roughly 6x8 where I went in and I edited on the colours. And I mean, I've just printed it out on paper because I wasn't quite sure how it would work. But you can modify, 
your own photographs from previous years and then print them out on cardstock and use that as a paper. And just to show, this is the same picture which I then squished and squeezed some more on the various dials and I ended up with this. And you can't see all the baubles as they are, but that doesn't matter because you can see enough. And then I started playing around. I should probably show you that this. This is a cross stitch picture which I have made and I took a picture of. And this is done in black and white printing of that picture. And then I did it in color, but I put it on the not quite the lowest level, but quite uh, a low level level of intensity. And and actually, I can't even remember all the switches and buttons I used for how to vary. And I have this version as well. And this I would be able to do some journaling on and you could still see the picture but it wouldn't confuse any of the journaling you'd be able to read you'd have the option this was might be a bit trickier but uh, if you spaced out your journaling you would be able to read on this and so this is opening up uh, a whole range of options for making your own paper taking your pictures and then shoving them through all those various filters which you can get nowadays and uh, do uh, some test runs on ordinary paper and then when you find something you like then you, that's when you slip in the cardstock and this means that if for some reason you would like a certain page or layout to be the same every year, well, bingo, you can do it because, I mean, you don't have to print it out now, but you can just save that image and then later on next year, print another version. Um, so um, I'm pretty excited. I haven't yet had the opportunity to do much about this uh, but I'm pretty keen on getting going and related to this idea is finding I'm, I'm a word geek so I like dictionaries uh, and I also like I have some collections of old um, encyclopedias I mean, old as in they are in Gothic script, uh, around about a hundred years old. And I am planning on scanning some of the pages from these with Christmas related words, scanning them, and then creating my own sort of text based paper. And um, one thing about scanning old encyclopedias and that, you may get a lot of uh, show through from the other side. Uh, I've done this with uh, just illustrations from these encyclopedias. So you may have to go and uh, rinse up, uh, depixel uh, the, the image. Uh, and I also have a few old Bibles, and although I am not a religious person, um, the the part about uh, it, I'm not sure what the day, the English version is, but the whole uh, Christmas part of the Bible with uh, Emperor Augustus who wants to have everybody counted. I am imagining scanning that particular part and using that as a foundation for a page. Hey, Penny? 
Yeah. Question. Have you ever tried when you're scanning, have you ever put like a paper behind it? Did that ever work? Uh, I did try and it didn't really work. Hmm. Oh, uh, I might try again. Uh, one of the issues is that my scanner, I mean, these encyclopedias were so thick mm -hmm. that I couldn't even get the lid down. Gotcha. So all the light would still be leaking in then. So it's sort of, mm, but, but I might, I might want to try a, try that again, but um, on the other hand, okay, so there are imperfections and you can see strange yeah. lodges and stuff, but that adds sort of an old feel. And if old feel is what you like, then that might not necessarily be a problem. Um, and... And then a further step from this is simply, uh, depending on your own computer graphics skills, is to make your own paper on the computer. Uh, I would probably, if I started doing anything like this, I would probably do it by hand, do my own artwork on a piece of paper, and then scan that and then use that as the foundation for a page. Um, so um, I have only started scratching the surface of this way to go, uh, but um, I like all the possibilities which are opening. Possibly there are too many possibilities. I have a problem with too much, uh, too many options. Um, but that's a whole range of ways where you can do your own paper. Not go with the kit. Um, I mean, there's the easy way. You just buy some sort of random scrapbook pad, use that. That's the easy way. That's a simple way. Um, you could also just buy uh, solid colored cardstock and decorate that. Uh, or you can start make being more complicated. Um, other ways of making paper, but now we are beginning to move more into journaling cards and embellishments. And this is stamps. And there are loads of stamps with Christmas themes. Check that I am. These are just some of my lawn fawn ones. Some that are not necessarily Christmas, but are wintery. And then because I am me, uh, this year, for instance, I have a set featuring Australian animals and I have a set featuring small aliens um, because, yes, um, because then this is where you really get creative. Um, a lot of these stamp sets come with coordinating, coordinating die sets, but you don't need them. You can just take your good old fashioned pair of scissors or a smaller pair. And then once you've stamped and colored, and again, here you have the option of choosing which colors do I want? Do you want them all to be in some sort of color scheme that you have throughout the album? Or do you just want to do them more realistic? But I have now been I have made up my mind. I'm going to have a Christmas platypus. Uh, well, a Christmas owl is possibly not so crazy. And there's going to be a Christmas alligator, crocodile. Um, these I haven't used a die cut on, but these are some mice. Um, and you can go wild. And now I am going to take you on a slightly dizzying trip because I have to move my web camera.
because I will have I've been fiddling around with these die cuts uh, and made a little seam, but I'm not quite sure if I am going to keep it this way or I might change. I mean, have you ever wondered how Santa Claus manages to get around the whole world in just one night? Oh. Um, that's because he's an alien zooming about in his little spaceship. Um, yeah. Um, we all have our small quirks and um, I sometimes go a bit crazy and now let's hope this stays um so you aren't even necessarily restricted to just using your christmas stamps if you have some stamps that you feel hey this fits into a theme uh, or i just like it um go wild i mean and I don't think there's a Christmas stamp police around anywhere. Um, you are so clever. So, so <laughs> clever. I love it. Aren't you here for that alien? I was freaking out. I'm like, I want one! <laughs> I saw that alien at 3 a.m. my time. It was great. <laughs> you were delirious, though. You were a little, you were a little funny at that point. <laughs> I love it. I, I'll, I'll also be having a purple Santa uh, alien. Yes. yes! That is brilliant. Purple people? Is that a purple people eater? Purple people eater! Purple people eater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It might be, uh, but it's, it's not a full grown up one. It's still a young it's one. It's a baby. It's a turkey year. Purple cast with nibbling on the naughty list, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, good old stamping. Making your own die cuts, using these as embellishments. Um, well, I mean, as many, it's just your imagination and the stamps that you own that uh, will, will limit your options in that area. Um, Hello. Right. Oh, okay. And the first. With dies, you don't necessarily need these figure dies because there are also these various shapes which you can use as a foundation. Uh, you can either use these to then put some of your embellishments on, you can stick words on here, you can do your own numbers. Um, I have uh, the numbers uh, for the days, um, yes. one option which I have used and I can show you is that last year I opted to make my own numbers and I used a die which is an open book and then I made, I used a couple of reds and I used a purple here because that was the Sunday of Advent. And I just changed the color of the number, but the fact that it was a book made it all cohesive. Um, so, also, the texts on the front, they are all cut. I've cut them myself uh, with a set of numbers and a set of letters and then just some random scraps of cardstock. And, yes, it is fiddly. Um, it's not just something that's ready-made. Osmosis uh, cold. Now I do realize that this is not. It's hang like on. As, osmosis cold comes through the glass. Um, in Denmark, a little heavier or. Um, it is very common to make your own Good. advent calendar for your kids with small with small gifts. Okay. So yeah. they every Christmas. 
or every October, November, you will find lots of these tags or similar in the shops with the numbers from 1 to 24 because we celebrate Christmas Eve. Um, so I simply bought, well actually I bought two sets and then I used from both sets. That's okay, I'll talk to you later. Um, that's one way of cheating with your numbers. Um, well, cheating, it's not cheating, it's being creative. Uh, that was stamps. And of course, your stamps, you can always take a sheet of cardstock and stamp all over. Uh, you can get those large uh, stamps, which cover a card, and you could place that around on the paper. So, uh, lots of options. Uh, where did I hide? Where did I hide? Um, there is an, I'm not sure I'd say awesome mess, but there is rather a lot of chaos here. And right now I cannot find them, but ordinary Christmas cards. I can find some of the small ones. Uh, or Christmas postcards can be used as journaling cards. Uh, and gift tags, just regular Christmas gift tags, use those um, as embellishment or depending on how large they are. Um, as a journaling card. Um, hang on, let's see. I had one in particular I can show. Uh, this is not specifically a Christmas card, it was just a plain card to make. And I stuck it in, and then I could have my journaling there, but I could have a photo on top. Uh, yes, uh, Betty Lou talking about that uh, doing it this way will make it even longer to complete. Yes, um, yes, uh, this does, it adds a lot of fun to the whole process. Uh, it also drags it out somewhat. Um, oh, here I can show you an example where I took part of a coloring page and colored and then I cut it down and used part of the page, not the whole thing. And I can tell that I'm getting a bit uh, confused and distracted, but um, <clears throat> hopefully I will be able to get all the points through. Um, Washi tape, ye old Christmas washi tape. You have a simple, boring, lined journaling card. You stick a bit of washi tape on it and hey presto, you have a Christmas themed journaling card. You can also just take a piece of card and cover it with all the wash Christmas washi that you have at the moment. And you have a card. So, yep, okay. Christmas washi rolling all over the place. Never mind. And do interrupt if you have any questions or comments because, um, yes. Um, 
there's supposed to be a giveaway. There's supposed to be a giveaway, and I have been forgetting all about that giveaway. That's not good. We're going to have to do something about that. Uh, I need to copy and paste the instructions for you. So paste and post. And it's the good old gen random number generator thing. And I will go and get this thing to generate a number. And then we will see, we will see. Uh, okay, I see that you are. Um, dip, 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 Has anyone not uh, posted yet? Has anyone not posted yet? You want to post now? Nikki, you can still post. Uh, we're doing a giveaway uh, and uh, just type a number between 1 and 100. Uh, I have completely forgotten to tell you what it is you can win. Uh, I'm being rather remiss here. Uh, for this session, you can uh, win the Everyday Storyteller ebooks. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ah, uh, there is, okay, Fancy Scrapper, you have 25, and the number that random generators did was 26. So, there was no one who got 26, so you are the winner, and, oops. Okay, the mouse moving faster than I can. Then my hands can work. Congratulations. Uh, the instructions for what you're supposed to do are here. Basically, you are to email Jennifer at the email address I have just posted, and then you will get your prize. Congratulations. Oh, good thing I remembered that. Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay, so one thing that is a repeat, but I will bring it now because it caught a number of people's attentions as a possibility for embellishments. Ye good old sealing wax. Um, I remember receiving gifts that had been sealed with sealing wax as a child. Uh, back then it was just sort of the sort, this sort, where there isn't a wick inside it. Uh, and it was just sort of blobbed on, but uh, you can do that if you like. 
uh, but nowadays you can also get all sorts of seals and I was absolutely convinced that I had one that said Gud Jul, which is Merry Christmas. Um, I don't. Uh, I'm probably going to have to remedy that. So I have a crown and I have a fleur de lis and I have a cat face. And the cat face is going to be used this year. Um, this is a different sort of idea. It gives a different sort of texture into your project. Um, and it may be sort of, a, well, it's no longer absolutely unique because now you have all seen it and maybe you will all skedaddle off and start using sealing wax in your albums. But um, it's not going to be many people who have that effect. It makes um, me, reminds me of Harry Potter. I have a Harry Potter thing going on when I think of sealing wax. <laughs> well, there's nothing bad about Harry Potter. <laughs> we almost just bought that set. We were just at Universal and I, I had it in my hand. I'm like, what am I going to do with it? I should have bought it. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> Next time, yes, for sure. For you to go back, right? <laughs> That's right. I have, I have my one for the basilisk right here. Oh, there you go, girl. Ooh. You got it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, now I am going to. I did bring this up in the previous session but I wasn't able to find my completed thing. I will, can you see that this is cross stitch? I don't know if you can, but it is. Um, scrapbooking is not my only hobby. Um, cross stitching is another one and Often when you subscribe to magazines, you will get these small freebie kits that come along with the magazine. And when we reach a certain time of year, they will invariably become rather Christmas themed. Um, and I have started now making up some of these, or you can just make your own small Christmas patterns and add a different sort of texture, bring another hobby interest if you already do cross stitching into your albums. And I had forgotten, um, you can actually now, uh, this one has all the dots in it still, get dies that will punch holes into your cardstock. You can also buy sheets of perforated paper and use that. Uh, but um, somehow the idea of making my own perforated cardstock is somehow much, much more fun. And again, when you have your, either your fabric or your cardstock, well, then all you have to do is decide, okay, am I sticking to a specific sort of color range or am I going with motifs? Because you can, for instance, the baubles I was talking about, there are loads of cross stitch patterns where you can embroider your own various baubles and then you can go wild and add several of those or, uh, well, again, it's, your own imagination that puts the limits. Um, the acid free question. Um, I don't worry about it in the sense that I say, oh dear, I wonder I'm not going to use it because I don't know if my I'm I'm just me. I have my mum and my dad. There are no siblings, there are no children. Well, there's my fur baby, but um, he's not really going to be interested in inheriting anything from me when I croak. So 
what I scrapbook is purely for myself. So this is up to you um, how worried you are. I can't see what sort of, <coughs> sorry, uh, how, I mean, <coughs> sorry, um, it's usually cotton or linen. Uh, the paper, well, if you make your own perforated paper, then you can buy paper that is acid free and avoid it that way. I don't know about the floss. Um, but for me personally, I have decided, yes, I think a bit about the acid aspect, but not so much because I am scrapping for myself. Not for some, not for future generations down the line, and therefore have to worry about how they will hold up. Now I haven't. Uh... <coughs> okay, and Fran says that as long as you don't put the things too close to photos, that's how she works about whether something is acid-free or not. Um, so that's also one way. Uh, but I mean, cross stitch is not the only type of embroidery around. So if you do some other sort of embroidery and needlework, well, you can just do use your technique and add something of interest that way. Uh, I did actually. Um, because in the first session, while I was talking and people were give, com commenting, and suddenly I realized, wow, imagine doing a six by eight cross stitch thing as your front page. And uh, it's not going to happen this year, uh, but if I stick uh, to six by eight, uh, I am experimenting for the first time with a six by eight album. And yes, this is something I cut out of a coloring book and then I mod, mod podged it on. Um, but yeah, I mean, that would be a spectacular first page to your December daily. Um, and then after having reached the idea that mm, okay well you could use other sorts of embroidery it's, it struck me that okay i am a knitter as well i do crochet a bit um maybe it is possible to do some knitting or crocheting and somehow get that in um of course we then come to the whole issue about bulk but I was thinking maybe I could knit something and stick it on my album cover. Um, and can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, the elephant in the room for me is completion of December dailies. It just <laughs> feels so impossible to me. How does everyone else get on managing that? I've never even tried. I've got one Christmas album that Christmas things go into, but I've never plucked up the courage to actually attempt to do it every day. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I have two unfinished albums, so I am not really the person to uh, <laughs> give you a trustworthy answer. Uh, I... I mean, this is one reason why I've gone to six by eight this year, because the 12 by 12 is possibly a bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, and I am also seriously considering, rather than doing what I've done the other years, where I have started usually in November, because I start with the first Sunday of Advent, and sometimes that falls in November, or with going to our local Christmas fair, 
which is also typically in November, and then sort of starting from there. And I am also old fashioned enough that I stick to Christmas ends on the 6th of January on Epiphany. So the fact I'm trying to stick in something for every day in all that period may have been a bit too much of a mouthful. So this year I am considering not necessarily making a page per day, but just how and when I feel like it. So there will be the ambition. What? I, I appreciate the ambition. <laughs> Um, because yes, um, yeah, uh, I might, I'm, pr I'm probably making, I'm definitely making things, uh, more complicated for myself than need be, but, um, that, that's, it's, it's some, it's a general issue with me and I am a great Christmas fan, uh, which is why when I first saw the video about December dailies some two years ago, then it was like, wow, I need to do that as well. And then just jumped into it. And um, yeah. Give um, yourself the grace to, to um, let your December daily process go through February, maybe even into March. You know, give yourself time. It's not like it has to be done in December. You're just documenting December. Yeah. Keep the holidays alive. <laughs> you know? Like, Maybe let's be real. Start. None of us have, well, okay, at least I don't have my tree done for a hot minute. Why should my scrapbook be done? Right. <laughs> so, but, but um, this is something that I mentioned also in the previous session. Doing the December daily, having that in mind, even if I never finish these albums, it's not been wasted because I have been more aware of my present, of my here and now. And I have, I have mental health issues and I have had a tendency to be either worrying about what's ahead, what's coming in the future, if there is any future, or looking at the past and wishing things could go back to the way they were. And both these tendencies don't do a lot of good for me. So this project has helped me focus more on the here and now. So even if I don't get a finished album at the end, even if these two for the previous years just stay the way they are, well, yes, I'm going to be a bit irritated at times and I will try to work some more with them but I am not going to beat myself over the head or anything I'm not because I have gotten another gift I have gotten something possibly more valuable and that is being much more here now enjoying the season uh, also possibly turning down my own expectations like I am a serious Christmas nut and I want to do all sorts of things and these are pressures that I put on myself nobody around me is pressuring me to do this do that or have something done by a specific day it's me who's the bad guy in this situation. And this has sort of helped me calm down a bit and enjoy, enjoy the month, enjoy the whole period of this year, of the time of year in a much calm way. And I know I haven't, gotten everything done that I wanted to, all my ambitions have not been accomplished, but I have been happy doing what I have been doing. I have been happy with getting whatever I managed to get done. And 
that is for me at least just as much of a victory or something to take away from the whole project so um okay i mean yeah i care enough that i am going to try a different size and a different sort of strategy because yes it would also be nice to have a finished prod product at the end but yeah um yeah um hmm, hmm. i think i I think I lost my uh, train of thought there, but um, uh, oh, and I can see that, uh, yeah, uh, you're welcome, Darlene, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, this is just, uh, I mean, scrapbooking, the real reason I came into it also has to do with my some of my mental health issues as a way of coping and seeing that I am actually getting better so for me it's possibly not so much the finished product as the process itself which is why I scrapbook and which therefore may mean that I don't necessarily finish all the things that I want to do or get started on them um, and I can see that there are some people who think, who agree with me on, on that. Um, uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, you have my commiserations, fancy scrapper. Um, yeah, mental health issues sucks. Um, and um, yeah. By the way, I can see we are approaching the hour. Uh, there's still some time and we can always hang on because the next thing isn't on until a further hour if you want but if you have any questions or comments uh, do post or unmute yourselves uh, and I will hey Penny yeah how much prep do you try to do are you trying to get foundation pages together or do you just kind of wing it during the season Ooh, um i have tried to do some sort of foundation pages but i find that i'm always sort of frustrated because i don't know what pictures will i be taking that day will they be the um, portrait format will they be landscape format um will it be some just a thing or something like that so i try to have something ready but i have realized i can't just do too much ahead of time um because then i just get frustrated when the stuff i have set up for a particular day or for a particular page just doesn't work with the pictures i have for that day um right i think it's a balance of having some structure to put some stuff in so you're not trying to invent the wheel every day but also it's yeah. hard to be flexible sometimes when you've got an idea so that you spent time on yeah um i think that this year i am going to be more focused on getting my small various embellishments done and have those ready so then when I do my pages, I mean, I know already various things that will be going on in December. So I can, like, for instance, the 6th of December, uh, which is St. Nicholas Day. Um, I have always sort of wanted to do something in commemoration. This is Father Christmas's birthday, after all. But the 6th of December is also Finland's Day of Independence. Uh, and Dad and I are Finnish citizens. And um, it's been, for a lot of years, it's been a tradition that I make Karelian pasties and my parents come here and we eat and we just have a good time. 
So invariably, my pages for that day, um, I mean, I'm not finished with this day, but there are the Karelian pasties, and it's very blue and white. And um, last year was sort of extra special. And um, yes, I have those covered up and ended in actually a not so not pocket page, but uh, Mum had made a cake, and I'm trying not to get any glare. And that's my parents with their faces covered up because I'm not sure they want me flaunting that about uh, at the table. And there was a bouquet of flowers. And then on the other side, I did this sort of layout because my paternal grandparents, uh, they started out their lives as being citizens of under the Russian Tsar. And then in 1917, they suddenly became citizens of an independent Finland. And um, Oh, bye, Brie. Uh, actually, you may have already jumped off, but um, thank you for joining. Um, um, and somehow I have a feeling that every, ta every Christmas album, December Daily, whatever I choose to call it, um, the 6th of December will be very blue and white. And so maybe this year is when I'll get St. Nicholas in because then I could just add him any old time. Um, I have been uh, thinking about doing something because the 7th on, of December is St. Ambrose's Day. Um, I am not a religious person, but yeah. Um, St. Ambrose is the patron saint of Milan, and I grew up in Milan. So maybe this year I'll also just stick a picture from Milan and do some writing about that, and maybe some memories of Christmas from when we lived back there, which does not come really in under a December daily theme but it relates to me, it relates to cr Christmas or the Christmas season because it's during that period of time and it relates to my life. Um, so I, th I think this year is going to be very free form. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Um, so, um, I now that I have Carol Ann on, because one of the things I have been using as decorations are remnants from when I make certain types of Christmas decorations. And these are just examples of some of the strips. And if I now, which year was it? I think it was this year. Uh, I will show you. Apologies to Carol Ann for showing pictures that she has already seen. I used them to make this pattern here. Mm -hmm. It was just a piece of card that I cut into a, a three by four and I've used some over here and uh, Danes have traditionally done a lot of paper decorations and cutting in paper and these Christmas stars this is just uh, I can <gasps> hold you um, Those are beautiful. They are folded Lovely. and woven. Oh, so pretty. And uh, they 
in the good old days, you just got them in white. And then they started making red. And then they started making all sorts of other colors. And they started getting sort of metal foil strips. And then they started making all sorts of patterned um, papers. And then sometimes they made these sort of glittery ones, which were just, they were held to uh, fold and make with those. And I can show you. The strips are, these are a large size. Uh, I can't remember if I have. I think, I think this star comes from this size of strip, but I make these every year. And when you've done made them, then you cut the rest of the strip off and then you have all these leftovers. And usually I just toss the leftovers because what am I supposed to do with these? But, um, Hey, yes, I can stick them in, be a bit creative, use some of my scraps um, and use them as embellishment and make my own cards. Our uh, hobby does turn you into a paper hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, I can't... Um, bum, bum, bum. No, I can't find, I have bought some that are this wide for this year. I'm, I'm not sure. I think the star might end up being this size. Um, so, uh, but I promised Carol Ann that I, I think I have a um, video on a previous YouTube channel, but I'm not sure I can find it, but I have promised her that I would try to make a new one and upload it to my current channel. <laughs> and then I will link it uh, for those who might want to. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> no stress. <laughs> because then my mind wandered on. Because in Denmark, I don't know what it's like other places in the world. There are, there's always two or three new books every year uh, with making various Christmas decorations mm -hmm. in paper. Ooh, yeah, but Northern Europe is the best at it. And, um, and I haven't even come onto the traditional plaited hearts yet. Um, but I suddenly thought that, hey, I could use some of these instructions. I mean, these are meant for 3D stuff. Um, like card, Ooh, cards, beautiful. cutouts, but I could just copy them. Mm -hmm. and use them as decorations in my album. Yeah, and Denmark, Denmark, Finland, Norway, Iceland are my um, paper crafting hero countries. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, hang on a second, I will be back. You probably have seen these in the very simple form, <laughs> these hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, this is an art form in itself here. Oh, I love those. 
I mean, this is the very simple one. This is easy peasy. Uh, this is, I can't really be bothered with it because it's not a challenge. Um, and I have been thinking that I should. Oh my gosh. Some of these yeah. and stick them in my album and then use also some of the scraps that are left over from making these. Yay. <laughs> uh, maybe make it sort of a crazy patchwork kind of journaling card to stick in. Um, because especially these strips, they've, it, there's become this sort of fashion thing. So one year, it's one type of pattern that you get or some sort of colors. And then next year, boom, it's a different range. Um, and these stars, they don't last forever, especially not if your cat gets a hold of them, because they make excellent cat toys. But if I now start putting in some of these left remnants in my album, well, I'll always have the memory of making stars, and these were the patterns that were in that year, or the ones that I chose to make. Um, and then if I do that for every year, well, it will be sort of a same old, same old, or sort of, but, but it will also be different because it will be different strips that, um, that, I will be using so um, and I don't know if you have any tradition for different sorts of paper decorations which you could then mod a bit and then use in your albums and maybe even just use the scraps uh, and um, yeah um, we, uh, I mean, not really a craft, but I have in past albums put little scraps of gift wrap paper in just so I can see, you know, because you use the different ones every year usually. So I've done that before. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't, but I did buy last year, I think it was the year before, I did buy some gift wrap paper and I did cut out some pieces and put in, um, I have not bought gift wrap before last year. I hadn't bought gift wrap paper for over 10 years because I had at some point gathered all my Christmas wrapping paper and I had read how much is in each roll and I had added it up. And when I came to 58 meters, which is possibly as much as 60 yards, maybe just a wee bit more, um, then I decided that I had no reason to buy any more Christmas gift wrapping paper until I used it up. And I still have quite a bit. And I have also given some of it away. Um, yeah, we don't, so we, we don't sort of go have that this year we have this gift wrap paper and this year we have that and it doesn't change. It's the same old, same old, same old. I bought a very large um, roll. Of, it, was, it was either 50 or 100 metres when <laughs> my first child was born. I used consistently for Christmas. So I've kept a bit of that, but that's the only thing I've kept. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the gift wrapping paper. That's also something to use. Um, so, um, and I mean, I can still present a few more ideas if you want them. Um, but I don't know if, I mean, we have already gone slightly over time. Um, are you game for more ideas? Yes, at least someone wants them and I mean, you can always leave if you get tired of hearing me babble on about Christmas. 
um, a very easy peasy thing. Stickers, clear. stickers, which come in all sorts of various shapes and sizes, and some are holographic and uh, textured. I don't know, can you see that these are slightly puffy? No, you can't really, but these are slightly puffy. And you can get them in all sorts of styles. So, uh, um, ah, <laughs> Christmas is your favorite. Okay, I will carry on. Um, you can also get these hearts as stickers. Um, I mean, the sticker possibilities are endless. And I know that some people have a gizmo so they can make their own stickers. Okay, um, this means you could combine using your own die cuts with your sticker machine and make your own stickers and go mad run amok in your own homemade stickers that way then now where did i it's going to be rather fun extricating myself uh, from all of this. Uh, this card, uh, that was a Christmas card and I decided I liked the motif so I just cut it into a three by four and uh, boom I have a filler card. But it's actually this one I want and this is something which is Danish, Dutch, I don't know if they've got it in the UK, but these, they're called three-dimensional di three pictures because, uh, let's see if I can get it, you build it up with layers. Um, I will find a different one because that Carol Ann has already seen that one and we don't want to show everything the same. So I'll show you a bunch of robins. So they come in these sheets with the background and then in ever smaller and smaller bits, which you then cut out, which is fiddly and should not be done with one of these, but with a very small and pointy scissor. And then you use foam dots to build them up. So they become these dimensional pictures. And I decided to keep in a pocket, uh, but you could also just uh, stick it maybe on the inside of your album cover um, and just be aware that, well, maybe bits of it will fall off <coughs> through the years, but um, I think they are actually intended for card making, but I think I prefer sticking them into my Christmas album and you can get all sorts of variations. I mean, there, there, there was the Robin and then I've got some angels here and I know I have some Christmas windows, but they are somewhere. Um, have I mentioned punches? Nope. Okay. Punches. And you can get them in here yeah, in various suitable. <coughs> The shapes. Those would be really cute to make those confetti pockets that people like to just fill with, you know, a bunch of little shapes. Those would be super cute for that. Yeah. And I mean, this is a, a large one. You could get a smaller one and then just have a field day. But you could also take just an ordinary circle. And I have a hexagon, but I can't get to it right now. Um, 
this you could use it to cut patterned paper with mm -hmm. and then make embellishments in that way um, so also if you get the placement right you could take a strip of cardstock and you could punch your shape like for instance this this deer uh, i did try but i failed and i'm not sure i have where i have that failed piece but i could take a strip and i could punch and then i could use the strip with the negative image as embellishment as well so i would both be having the deer to use and i would have the rest of the strip um, and i think i can yes <clears throat> because at least with these deer i haven't just stuck them on i have actually mm -hmm. Uh, no glare. Down there. Yes. I have used. Uh, hang on. We will solve this by taking it out and doing it this way. I used those foam dots to prop them up with because I thought that just adding the dimension with those dots. Yeah, that's great. That looks nice. So. Um, <coughs> oh yes um i mean you don't have to i mean just because you don't buy a kit doesn't mean you have to make all your embellishments and die cuts yourself because a lot of ranges also do make their own die cuts so you could just go and buy maybe even buy the ones that suit some of the paper in, in case you buy a pad of or a collection of paper often there are die cuts so um i mean if you want to make it simpler but still maybe not have it look the same as everyone else um okay i have had stickers i have had coloring books washi wax seals i've had those remnants from star making punches album decorating i have talked a bit about it but um i haven't mentioned napkins this time around that is a christmas napkin and mod mod podge and that is also a christmas napkin uh, so, and those are two Christmas napkins. So that's also, I haven't tried putting napkins on cardstock or paper. Um, I'm not sure if that would work. Uh, there's, there's only one way to find out. Um, I can, let's see. Uh, here are some examples of me making journaling cards by using stencils where I have just used actually I think these were leftover pieces of photo paper because when I print photos uh, I sometimes have a piece left over that's large enough for a three by four and I don't like throwing away scraps. Um, one thing, um, this page was a bit tricky for me to make because I had too much, too many pictures, too much I wanted to write about. And then I discovered, because it's one of these shaped, that with a bit of careful finagling and some washi tape i could make this tip in to hide my journaling love it space for 
for uh, for pictures. And then this idea, I know that some people like to do a top five list of films or music, <clears throat> something like that. Um, and then there's this whole thing about film ratings where you have five, one to five film reels or whatever, or stars or stuff like that. Um, I have, I can show you a picture of it. Um, that is a pile of Christmas calendar books, which, and it's not my complete collection. Um, it's a thing in Denmark. You have a book, it's a story, it has 24 separate chapters, one for each day. And I love them, and I buy them when I find them. Um, and then last year I started reading them. Ah, Peggy, bye, and thanks for coming. Um, but I started reading them because, to be honest, I have too many. I need to um, start um, uh, culling in them. And then I thought, well, okay, I'll start reading them and then I'll do a rating system. And you can see here, there are five small symbols because I used, and I have somewhere, my block should be here somewhere, um, somewhere. Okay, well, I can't find it now, but I looked through my various Christmas themed back sets and I found five small symbols. So I had a candy cane and a Santa hat and I think it was a candle. Hang on. Yes, and then I had a stocking and then the stocking, I made the stocking twice and then decorated it because then I made my own rating system where I would color in my opinion of the book. So if it was a one star thing, well, I'd just color in one of the symbols. And if it was a five star book, then I would color all five of them. And um, so if you like to do some sort of rating system, rate things in your album, well, that is a way of doing it. Instead of just sticking stars or drawing stars, get creative and use some of your stamps. Um, alternatively, you could, um, you could punch deer for the number of stars that you want to give a movie or, or anything. I was thinking that'd be a fun way you could rate each day as to how much holiday you had in your day. <laughs> that would be a way of doing it. <laughs> Penny, this is yeah. Ray. Those books from Denmark, do they have a name? Is there a, a class, a, a way of describing them? Um, I mean, they're, call, they're called Julekalenderbøger, which is literally translated Christmas calendar books. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, they come both in, okay, uh, I've got it here. Um, it was hidden under my open album, um, but I have the four of the symbols still on here uh, because I've been using the other side for stamping on that block. Um, they come for children, which was, I think they originated as sort of entertainment for children and give them a book on the 1st of December and then they could read a new chapter every day. But nowadays, um, you also get them for grown-ups and you get st uh, stories that are for different age groups and was well, not quite an industry, but I'd say two or three uh, new ones every year. Hmm. So, 
Um, we take our countdown very seriously in Denmark. Uh, we also, um, this is a picture which I will probably have something similar on every December 1st. It's the um, Advent calendar candle mm -hmm. um, or Christmas calendar. They come in all uh, all thicknesses, all color, all different colors. Again, there's a fashion. So some years they will look, have a, one sort of look and the next year they will look slightly different. And then there's the numbers one to 24. And then you burn down every day a bit and then slowly count down to Christmas Eve, yay! I think I want to move to Denmark. They have like so mm -hmm. many traditions I love. <laughs> Come on over! <laughs> Um, and, um, I mean, and I, me being the nut that I am, I still have one of these candles. Uh, some of the larger ones are sort of, it's this phenomenon where you are always behind because they take so long to burn down that often it's at home in the morning when you're having your breakfast. But the thing is, you never quite burn down that particular day. So you're running behind on your candle. And then usually you play catch up in the weekend. Um, <clears throat> that's not a problem for me because I don't have to go anywhere. So no big deal. And I mean, it's offices, workplaces, they will also often have one of those for Christmas. Um, it's a thing. Um, okay, that was album decorating. I actually think I have come through my whole list this time. Um, and um, yeah, um, I think you learn stuff. I hope you got ideas. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking I need to go back through the video and start a list of like the hundreds of ideas you, you've just given us. <laughs> I've been writing a whole bunch of them down. So <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I'm just happy I've been able to give ideas. Uh, I did end up getting a few others during the previous session. Um, I'm not sure if I should tell the really crazy one. Um, sure, why not? <laughs> you already showed us aliens, Penny. What can yes. you say? I was just going to say, really? We already did aliens. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have. This sort of tape, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Dotted. Mm -hmm. It's a dotted tape. Mm -hmm. uh, not dotted. Um, and it's not Lego, but it is sort of the Lego. Oh, yeah, it's puffed oh, up. Yes. How um, cool is that? And I suddenly got the idea mm, I could possibly add a strip of Lego tape, possibly on the inside of my album. Fun. And then uh, <clears throat> um, stick Lego pieces on here. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> um, uh, and as I 100% support out, that idea. Just build it up. Bulk. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure yeah. about this. Um, so, um, yeah. I can't wait to see it. I love Lego. <laughs> I, I will keep you updated and I will, if I put Lego in, you will definitely get to see it. Yes, yeah, so right. there must be pictures, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I have been, 
um, on YouTube. Uh, when I post, when I get that video filmed and put up, then I will talk about it on somewhere on Simple Scrapper and I'll put, post the link. Oh, good. Um, I don't, I haven't done on my current channel, I actually don't have anything with paper other than a few old planner videos. Uh, I have mostly been doing uh, cross stitch videos on it so far, but I have been planning on maybe expanding it a bit and adding some uh, creative Christmas stuff, um, such as the hearts and different things, and um, the stars would fit right in there. So. Um, I will, I will let you know where you can find me once I have that uh, video up. Uh, Wonderful. So, um, do you have any other questions? Can we just come visit? <laughs> <laughs> um, you will have to wait a while. <laughs> um, the place is a mess. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I have that right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's possibly a bit more... Um, 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 well, I, I'm not sure if I'm quite yet a recovering hoarder or I still have hoarding issues. But it is, there are parts of my house where the only way you get around is via goat tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that. Um, Me too. Uh, so, uh, but after, when, when I've gotten more done, then by all means, come to Denmark and come right. here and visit me. <laughs> Would love it. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Thank you for joining. Um, right, thank you. I will now, unless there are any more questions, it doesn't appear. Uh, I have to stop recording and then I have to end the meeting, which will throw you all out. But that's because uh, they need uh, to have us all leave the room to process yes. thank the you. recording so it can be uploaded later. But you can always ju jump back into the Zoom room and chat and crop and get ready for the next uh, session, which will be in less than half an hour. And that will be Jennifer with Stamping for Scrappers. So, uh, Merry Christmas! Yes, Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. So, uh, bye and thank you for joining me.